Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm your host, RJ. In this show, we take a new ingredient every week. It's going to be an ingredient you can find at your local supermarket, and we're going to teach you how to make a wonderful recipe with it. So stick around and check out the recipe. Hello, welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I am your host, RJ. You are here with Swiss Diamond and Swiss Diamond's Kitchen. Uh, like always, every week we take, a, we take an ingredient, we cook a couple of things for you guys, show off some of the cookware we're selling, um, hopefully you learn a little something and interact with us. So let's start by clicking that um, follow button down below. We need more followers. I need to be able to buy more stuff so I can do nicer things for you guys. Um, if you remember last week, it was chili peppers. I went all through everything I could think of for chili peppers. I didn't want to do, you know, I didn't want to just do spicy stuff, which we're not, although there's a lot of spicy peppers down there. Um, I really wanted to do some a nice Indian dish or an Asian dish or something that could really showcase the peppers. The problem with that is you and I would be spending about four hours together and a lot of it would be really boring while it just kind of simmers. Um, so we decided not to do that. Switch gears a little bit. I'm going to make a, since it's kind of grilling season, but it's also kind of cold, uh, we're kind of on that transition. I'm going to do a really good uh, kind of indoor party hosting type of uh, meal. So we're going to do... Um, bacon wrapped jalapenos that are stuffed with uh, cream cheese and then also a spicy um, sloppy joe that is uh, it's actually my recipe from growing up that we have worked peppers in because I am a huge spice fan um, don't be afraid of these nothing here while we are using some pretty spicy peppers um, we are cutting everything out nothing's gonna be to the point where you don't like it and or to the point where you can't handle it I'm sorry and if you don't like heat at all uh, keep some of the chilies out. Not a big deal. So I've been told in the past that uh, I don't get into cooking quite quick enough. So I've already gotten stuff going, right? So I have, this is our Swiss Diamond grill pan. It is the 63281 is the SKU number if you're looking for it. Um, it's $164.95 all day, every day. You pick it up. Um, we got it uh, on um, Amazon Prime. So if you buy it today, you could have it tomorrow depending on where you live. Uh, I know Prime's not next day all the time, but sometimes it is. Uh, you know what? Let's start with chili peppers, or with the with the stuffed jalapenos. So what we've done is we took jalapenos, I cut them in half, and I cut the cut all the membrane and seeds out of them. I'll show you one here. So you just take it, just make sure they're washed, that's all. Just cut it straight in half. So you see inside we've got all the membrane, which is all the white stuff, and of course the seeds. That's really where the heat is. Um, the pepper itself, the jalapeno anyway, is a, uh, it's a sweet, uh, I want to say peppery flavor, but not pepper as in chili, but kind of a pepper as in black peppery flavor. Um, it is a very common, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very common chili flavor. You know, if you go to, I don't know, really anywhere and you get a spicy something, most of the time it's made with a jalapeno base. Um, so that's that, that's that, uh, flavor you're looking for. So I just take a knife. And kind of cut around try to cut as much of the ribs out as possible uh, cut the seeds out uh, two things when you're messing with chili peppers I'm doing it in the house wear gloves why because if you wipe your eyes you go to the restroom either one it's gonna be a painful rest of that day uh, you don't want to do that keep your fingers out of your eyes keep your keep your hands covered put them in gloves I know I'm not doing that uh, two reasons I don't have gloves I've got a ton of stuff going on here it's really hard for me to take them off wash my hands this at the other while alive um, and I've been dealing with them forever, so I know not to touch my eyes, and I know to go wash my hands a bunch of times. But especially when you're peeling these things, I mean, I'm sorry, especially when you're cutting them in half, trying to take the membranes out. Um, and in a minute, we're going to get into habanero peppers. Those are hotter. Those are higher up on the school bill unit. You're really going to want to make sure you protect your hands. Most importantly, protect your eyes. Um, so do as I say, not as I do there. Uh, oh, you know what I didn't get? Can you guys grab me the cream cheese? Ah. Uh, I always forget something. It is where the butter is, which if you could grab that, that'd be great too. A little butter as well. Um, all right, so I guess while we wait for that, let me talk you through what we're doing here. So we took these peppers, um, the jalapenos, and we, again, we took out all of the uh, seeds and as much membrane as you can get to. If you're very sensitive to spice, spend a little bit more time getting in there. Um, if you like them to be a little spicy, by all means, leave a couple, of, leave a little bit of the membrane in there. It'll be fine. Um, the, the jalapenos are kind of going to be our baseline for how I explained to you how everything else is as far as spicy today. 
So if you've ever had a fresh jalapeno, obviously that's what these are. Um, they are a medium heat. They're considered a medium heat. Some people think they're extremely hot. Hold on a second, guys. I made the camera. Boom. Got all my stuff. Um, but that's kind of the baseline of where we're going to be today. So with these, what we're going to do is we are going to unwrap our cream cheese. Roll up my sleeves a little more. All right. So you just want to cut about yay much. I don't know. There's markers on this. It's probably about a tablespoon. Probably about a tablespoon. But about that much. You can see it lines up pretty good with my pepper, pretty well with my pepper. Spread it in there. Um, you, you may want to use a butter knife if you're uncomfortable using a sharper um, paring knife. The butter knife is going to make it a little harder to cut the uh, cut the cream cheese, but it should spread right on there just the same. So just spread these. You don't want to over you don't want to over uh, fill them because you a you are going to wrap them with bacon and b it does melt right. So if it's overfilled, it's going to ooze out everywhere, which isn't a big deal, especially with the Swiss diamond cookware. The nonstick's going to clean up right away. Um, but it will burn first as it boils, as it, as it melts over, it will start to burn. Um, and then you've got a little bit of burntness on there. Some people actually really enjoy burnt cream cheese flavor. There is a burnt cheesecake out there that is amazing at one of the local restaurants. Um, but if that's not what you're going for, don't do it. Anyway, so you just want to, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but you just kind of want to make them even on top there. Uh, I'm going to do that with, I don't know, a few of these that way we've got a couple to show you so what I've done is I've taken that Swiss diamond grill pan that I was talking to you about earlier as you can see it's got the it's got the grill lines in it's got the grill ridges if you will um, you could do this outdoors for sure you can do it on a flat top um, you could probably do it on a fry pan the thing with a fry pan is when you put the bacon in there it's not gonna have anywhere for the fat and run route so it's really gonna cook um, on itself or in itself it's the same thing as as fry pan bacon some people love it some people think that it's too crispy in some places and too uh, fatty in others um, and you'll want to be a lot more cognizant of when you're cooking these face down which is the way you'll start these because the fat's gonna it's not gonna be anywhere to go so it's gonna get into your cream cheese um, and into your pepper and create pockets in there which cooks them a little bit unevenly so I definitely recommend you guys doing it on um, on some kind of grill or grill pan if you don't have one of these Swiss diamond grill pans. However, if you don't, look below. We've got them for sale. And you can pick them up today. And they'll be at your house, as I said, probably by the end of the week. Today's only Tuesday. Um, all right. So we're just going to fill these. I'm probably going to fill just what I have cut. I won't take all the cream cheese. I may not use all the bacon, but you guys will get the idea. So, guys, with chilies, there are many, many different kinds, flavors, Um heat levels, they come dried, they come fresh, they come pickled. Uh, everything kind of has its own has its own flavor. So there are, for instance, a dried jalapeno is called an adobe pepper. Um, and then they have pickled jalapenos, which has a totally different flavor, although they do look like sliced jalapenos, um, whereas the dried ones don't. And actually labor, later, we're going to be using some of the adobe peppers which have been rehydrated um, and put into a sauce. You'll see. All right. So we just have this filled. I'm going to move this out of the way. Take this butter and put it here for now. Um. All right, so what you can do is you take a piece of bacon. I like to start mine on this side. It really doesn't matter, but kind of give it a stretch as you wrap it. So stretch it and wrap it, stretch it and wrap it. The idea is to kind of seal in the cream cheese as much as you can. You're never going to get it perfect. Um, kind of seal it in as much as you can. Now, when you start to cook these, cook the first side uh, face down or open side down. That can be hotter. How's this work? You get it there? So we're going to cook those face down. Um, it's starting to sizzle just a little bit. You probably can't hear it. You want that pan to be pretty hot, but not rip roaring hot. You don't want it to be too hot because what happens is if you put cold bacon on a hot pan, it's going to try to burn on you really fast. So you don't want to do that. 
Um, so it's actually better to have, as again, I had this pan a little bit low. It's coming up to temp now. I can start to hear the sizzle. Um, that is better than having the pan too hot. I would probably preheat it around medium. Um, this one has this new cooktop we have has temperatures on it. So I was at about 300, 300 degrees. I moved it up to 425. Um, I don't know how accurate that temperature or how accurate the thermometer of this was. It's probably something we should test. So I don't have enough bacon for all these. That's all right. Somebody will eat them. So as you can see, we're just wrapping them, trying to cover up all the cream cheese, give or take, on that side. And then, again, putting them face down or open side down, uh, which with, the reason why we're doing that is what that's going to do is it's going to allow that side of the bacon to start to cook while the cream cheese in the middle still ha still is cool. Um, if you flip them over, if you start them on the other side and then flip them over, what happens there is the cream cheese is already extremely hot or as hot as it's going to be, right? It's starting to be melty. Um, and it'll all lose out. This way, the goal is get the bacon nice and crispy before that starts to happen, flip it over. You still have the cool on the other side. The bacon will then cook the other side, cook the pepper through, as well as um, finish out the cream cheese and the bacon itself. So we're also going to cheat these. So usually what you would do, you know, traditionally you would make these outside on the grill. Um, and what you can do with the grill, right, is you can close it, um, which keeps the heat in, gives it that oven effect. Well, I don't have the I don't have a way to close this, so to speak, but I do have a lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a square lid on this that we sell. Um, it matches the size perfectly, and it has a vent um, a vent knob, so you can open or close it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it. I'm going to try to get all that steam out of there um, while keeping the heat inside. So not all the steam is going to go. It's still a lid. Uh, it's not. It's you know it doesn't have as much air movement as say a grill does. But it should come pretty close. It's probably too hot now. So I just turned it down to 375 if you're keeping up with me at home. Um, look at that. Last piece of bacon and that pan is full. So, perfect. Alright, so. All right, we have a mic issue. I think we fixed it. Um, we will order a new one this week. That way we don't have this problem. Anyway, I don't know where I left off. Going to start back at these are Chipotle Chili Sloppy Joes. Um, so the first two chilies I'm going to put in this are pretty to extremely mild. So you don't have to worry about them blowing up your family, anybody getting mad because they're too spicy. What you're going to get is you're going to get that smoky flavor out of them. Um, you're going to get a little, bit of, um, a little bit of a chili flavor because we're going to eat Flabanos. Um, but poblanos are also extremely mild. Um, and then at the end, the last one we're going to put in are habaneros. Uh, the habanero is going to give you a sweet heat. Um, I am going to take the ribs out of it. I am going to take the seeds out of it. So hopefully it's not too hot for the crew. Um, play with those as you like. So those are the hottest ones we have here today. They can get really hot. If you throw the whole pepper in, especially if you just start cutting it and um, don't take the ribs and seeds out, that could get pretty hot. So, you know, however you guys like them. So here's the trick. If you have leftover bacon fat, like I do, boop, put it in there. Is that part of the recipe? No. Is it going to make it better? Hell yes. So just put that in there. Um, we like to use all the stuff here. People are going to eat everything. So guys, as this kind of starts to cook, this is a jalapeno, standard jalapeno. You're going to find it at every grocery store ever. Um, usually get them in bulk. You can get them cut or whatnot. So they come, you know, different sizes. I got some fat ones and some skinny ones. But these are a standard jalapeno. There's no way to tell on the outside if it's a hot one, if it's not a hot one. Just pretend like they're all hot, okay? Um, they, some of them are surprisingly cool. Some of them are surprisingly warm. But there's no way to tell from the outside or from the inside, actually, once you cut it. Not until you put it in your mouth. Um, they just have different capsaicin levels. So I'm just browning off this beef. All right, so I also have all of these red jalapenos. Red jalapenos are much sweeter, much less hot. Um, I believe they are overripe jalapenos. I could be wrong, because every time I say that, people yell at me, but I've seen red jalapenos on plants, on my plants that are supposed to be green jalapenos. So I'm going to go with the overripe, um, or riper, or whatever. Uh, they are definitely sweeter. They are cooler, uh, but still hot, right? So the, they can still get pretty warm on you. Um, so you still want to be careful with those when you're, when you're out and you're playing with, um, toys for the first time. 
So the next thing we have here, these two we're going to use here in a bit. So these are habaneros. I don't recommend you touch these without gloves. I, again, I know I'm using their gloves. I have done this a bunch of times. I'm not going to go rub my eyes. I'm not going to go use the restroom without washing my hands a bunch of times. Um, get some gloves. They sell them here on Amazon. Just get some food safe gloves. Use these when you're cutting these up. Especially when you're going to cut them, get the ribs out of them, because then you have your hand all over the capsaicin. But really, the outside of these, if I rub them on my face, it's going to be a painful afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then these are poblano peppers. So I'm going to use one of these instead of a green pepper. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to give me a smokier flavor. It's going to give me more of a chili flavor um, and less of that. You know, a green pepper is just kind of, eh. You know, it just kind of tastes like, I don't know, pepper, but not really much there, right? Um, this one is, I'm getting yelled at by the crew. They love green peppers. So there's not much there. I guess they eat them. I don't know. Um, this one's going to give you green pepper flavor, but it's going to give you more smokiness in it. It is not, these are not hot. They are, they have a touch of heat. If you're extremely sensitive, um, if you're extremely sensitive to spice, you may feel that these are hot, but these usually aren't hot. Once again, though, go in, take the ribs and seeds out of them. You do that, you're going to get rid of most of the capsaicin that are in them. That's where everything's stored. Not all of them, again, especially as you start to get up in the hotter peppers, they're still going to be warm. Um, there you go. That's what you're looking for. Anyway, so just for everything, we're going to de-seed. Actually, every pepper. Sweet peppers, green peppers, uh, you know, the red and green ones. De-seed and de-rib those as well because um, those are going to get bitter on you. The seeds, there's no flavor at all in them. I, I don't know. I guess you can spit them out later and create some plants, but just get rid of them. Save them. You know, if you guys have a garden, if you have the ability to do that, save them, plant them in the spring. Um, depending on where you guys live, chilies here grow late spring. I plant them usually around April, uh, harvest them in August, September. Um, they they really like the heat. You know, if you live much north of here, I don't know if the if the hot ones will even grow. Um, not without having some inside time. But try it. If you guys haven't grown your own food, by all means, try it. Just take a seed, literally, these seeds right here, take them, germ germinate them, put them in the ground, or dry them out if it's too early. So there's a lot of bacon cooking in here, and it's starting to smell amazing. So with these, what we're doing is I'm just going to keep this pan rotating. Clearly, there's a hot spot on this grill, um, and also, I'm not keeping it centered, which is, you know, a big part of it. So these, speaking of that, as you can see that they are, while they're not all cooking 100% evenly, there is hot spots all over, especially in the middle. This one wasn't on the grill. <clears throat> Swiss Diamond cookware is made from, or at least our, our HD nonstick is made from cast aluminum. So what that's going to do is it's going to make your heat retention work extremely well, um, as well as it keeps it from ever spinning or warping, because this is the way that the metal wants to be. If you have a stamped piece of steel or a stamped piece of aluminum or spun, what happens it takes a, a flat piece of aluminum, right? And it pushes it down like that, which is great, and it stays. But over the heat cool cycle, a bunch of times, it starts to flip back up. Um, so depending on which way it got pressed, it either presses into the middle um, and it'll spin, or it presses up from the middle, and that's when you see most people have seen it before. You're cooking, and all the fat or juice, kind of or oil or whatever you're doing, is on the outside of the pan. It wasn't designed that way, probably. Um, it probably just ended up that way between heat cool cycles. All right, so I'm gonna start making the rest of the stuff we need here. So we need one. Um, one pepper cut and diced. So again, I'm going to use a poblano because I prefer the flavor of this to a green pepper. To a green pepper. Can you pop that door open? I know I asked you to close it earlier. It is warm in here. So we're just doing not a fine dice, just a you know medium. Medium dice, they're all going to, you know, it's all going to be together in a sloppy joe. A sloppy joe is not known for being, you know, a delicate culinary creation. So you can whip these up however you want to. If you want to put this stuff in a food processor, make them smaller, cut them quicker, by all means. Um, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. But wait, before we continue, do me a favor. Click that like button. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. Make sure you've hit the bell so you get our notifications. And comment down below. I know you don't like everything I do, so let me hear it. Now, back to the recipe. So once your meat gets to about, I don't know, about here, about halfway to being browned, 
that's when I want to put in these uh, onions and peppers. So we're going to take, again, one green pepper or one poblano pepper in this case. And we're going to put it in there. We're going to take about a cup of um, sweet onion. It's about half, about half onion. Um, again, it's Sloppy Joe's. If you like onion more, put more in there. If you like it less, don't put it in there or put it in less. Not a big deal. Really where it gets important is the liquids and the sweets for the sauce. You want to make sure that the sauce tastes as as intended. How's that? Um, so yeah, so we're just going to take one of these. Whoa. And just do a quick chop on these. Put those in there. All right, we're going to let those cook down. Um, there's probably about four minutes left on the beef before it gets browned. Um, so that should get the uh, peppers and onions to start to break down and become a little bit translucent. I'm not going to cap this yet. We will cap it in a bit. Um, but because I want the ground beef to kind of cook and sear off. So I'm actually going to raise the temperature here. Because what I want is, again, a good browning on this beef. If you, if you cap it now or put the lid on it now, what's going to happen is it's going to um, it's going to stay like wet, which is fine if you're doing chili, but for ground beef, or I'm sorry, for uh, sloppy joes, I really like to have that crisp on the meat before I put the sauce in hanging it. All right. So we're going to check these peppers here. Yeah, they're cooking well. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Just rotate them. You want to make sure that the bacon's cooking on all the sides. Um, Obviously, you know how you like bacon. Some people like it chewy. Some people like it crispy. Cook it to however you and your family like it. Um, I would not suggest serving it raw, but other than that, by all means, however you guys like it, there's really no way to serve it. The uh, the peppers and the um, the peppers and the cream cheese are going to be cooked through, I promise. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, like I told you, I'll put this lid on here. And we're going to open the steam all the way. That's going to help cook it all the way through. Um, it's going to create a little bit of a convection type of cook. There's no fan in it, obviously, but the heat should come up and go back down. Um, you know, rise up here, go back to the middle, kind of circulate and get everything cooking straight through. All right. So as this goes, what we're going to do for the sauce, right? We're going to use a half a cup of water, um, which is that. We're going to use, I use a teaspoon and a half of mustard. Uh, if you like it tangy, use some more. If you like it less tangy, use a little bit less. Um, I like a teaspoon and a half of mustard. Um, two tablespoon or one tablespoon, I'm sorry, capped or, or packed or whatever. Uh, brown sugar, dark or light, doesn't matter in this instance. Because um, you're not going for the color, you're just going for the flavor. Uh, we're going to need chili sauce. Pre-buy it. Uh, I mean, I know you can make it by all means. Make it if you want to. This is Sloppy Joe's. You want to be done in 15, 20 minutes. Pre-buy it. Your local store's got some. Um, there's national brands and there's probably store brands, whatever you got, it's fine. What else do we need? Am I missing something? Oh yeah. Chili's in adobo. So if you've never got uh, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce before, these are, did I say adobo or dry jalapenos earlier? Chipotles. I'm sorry. Chipotles are dried jalapenos. Go back, rewind all that, scratch it, and then insert me saying chipotles. Okay. So. These are in an adobo sauce, which is a smoky um, uh, Tex-Mexy southwestern type of sauce. It's uh, it's a little sweet. There's not a lot of heat in this. Um, there's not a lot of heat in this at all. The flavor is a long way, though. You definitely don't need to dump this. I know it's a little can. You definitely don't need to dump this whole thing in there. I'm going to take one pepper with the sauce that comes with it. Oops. And I'm going to cut it up, dice it. And then we're just going to put all that good stuff in there. Another pro tip, wash your cutting board kind of right away. This stuff will stain it. And then you're going to have red stuff on your cutting board. And you're going to be yelling at me. Oh, that guy in the internet. Um, so when you get done with it, wash it kind of sooner than later. Yeah, these are working well. All right, let's keep those going. Push them down just a touch. All right, so here, like I said, what we're doing is we're just browning this off. Uh, we probably have another minute or two on it. 
You don't have to, since I threw bacon in there, if you throw bacon in, you don't have to wait till the bacon's all the way crispy. That bacon's going to get crispy well after um, the meat will brown, especially because it's probably mixed up in there and not just sitting on the hot surface. Um, I promise the bacon will be good by the time this is all done because we're going to have it sauteing for, or I'm sorry, we're going to have it simmering for probably about 10 minutes here in a bit. Um, all right, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. No. All right, we are good. So with the with chili sauce, you're gonna need about a half cup. Um, I'm gonna use a touch more. I have a little bit over a pound of meat. Um, this recipe calls for a pound of ground beef. I prefer uh, 85, 15, 80, 20. I wouldn't go too much leaner than that. Um, if you're throwing bacon in there, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Um, and really, if you go too much higher fat than that, if, you know, if you're down in the 75 um, or 70 percent range, that's great for a grill burger. But there's gonna be a lot of fat that renders out and just sits in there. Um, you're going to get that fatty flavor. It's going to feel like it sits on your stomach, especially once you mix everything together. You're not really be able to get the fat out of it. Uh, I wouldn't go that high. Again, if that's what you have, it's going to be good. Uh, but maybe what you do is you cook it, you drain it, you put it back in. Um, and that'll reserve enough of the fat. Don't drain it forever. Just kind of pour it off in the colander, throw it back in there. Um, you'll be good to go. So again, I like to use 80-20, uh, 85 15, whatever the store has available. I never buy that lean stuff. Uh, I end up cutting fat into it if I have to. Um, but again, I know different people need to diet different ways. And if that's what you need, the 85 or the, the 95, five or whatever they've got is, it'll be just fine. It'll just be a little drier. So these are getting pretty much exactly where you want them. I'm gonna flip them one more time, get that the less done side. I actually like to have a little bit less done on one side, just the way I prefer them. Um, but I'm cooking these for other people. So we're gonna cook them how most people would prefer them. Boom, cover them. Those are pretty much done. I'm gonna actually go ahead and turn those down to low. Since they're on the, since it's in the grill pan and they're on the ridges, um, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna get soggy. It's not sitting in that bacon fat. It's not sitting in the grease. Um, anything that still comes off it is still gonna render down and be in the in the grill pan in the grill lines. Um, which again, keeping that food raised is really gonna create the the bacon's gonna be crispier. Uh, nothing. It's not gonna be soggy when you take it out and bite it. It's still the, the jalapeno is gonna have that snap to it, which is what you're looking for. Um, but everything will be good and cooked. Keep it on low. Keep it lidded. Uh, this this one goes down to 100 degrees. Again, I don't know how accurate that is, but if it really goes down to 100, that's a perfect temperature for a few minutes. It's not a good holding temperature all day. You need to hold it 140, but it's a good holding temperature for you know 15 minutes. That would be perfect. Okay, so this is about where we want it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next step is I'm going to toss in all this stuff, right? So you're going with the chipotles. I'm going to put those jalapenos or the habaneros in last. I'll show you. Um, we're going to go with the water. Go with the mustard. Go with the brown sugar. You can go with chili sauce. Eh, let me shake it. About a half cup, eh, a little bit more than a half cup, it'll be fine. Um, salt and pepper. Now, don't salt and pepper this at the end. Um, you got too much flavors going on, you want to get the salt and pepper in now. If you ground beef dishes, uh, tacos, stuff like that, if you salt and pepper it at the end, what's going to happen is you're just going to have it on that top bite. Um, so as you go down and you try to eat further into the sandwich, or if you're eating this as a chili on top of spaghetti or whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, you want the salt and the seasoning to be kind of throughout. All right, so I'm moving this down to a simmer. I'm gonna throw the lid on here while I cut up the habaneros. We're gonna let this simmer again. 10 minutes? I'm gonna guess 10 minutes, we'll look at it. <laughs> Excuse me, hold on. Okay, boom. So you may end up having to add a little bit more chili sauce or a little bit more water, depending on how liquidy or, um, yeah, liquid is a good word, how wet you like it. Um, I like my sloppy joes pretty wet, so I can already tell by looking at that that I'm going to add a little bit more liquid here in a minute. But I'm going to let it cook down first. You can always add more. You can't ever take it away. So let's let it cook down, see where it, see where it lands, see what it looks like. Um, I'm probably going to end up with another quarter of a half cup of water in there. All right, so we're going to do with these habaneros. Again, these are going to be really spicy. So I'm just going to go right on the top, cut that whole top bit off. Um, this is all hot. So if you want to have fun, eat that. So then I'm going to just cut it in half, just like I did the rest of the peppers. 
and then go in here and do the same thing. Where's my other knife? Smaller. Same thing. <clears throat> Wear gloves. Don't do this with your bare hands. Cut out the um, cut out the veins or whatever membrane, whatever we're calling it, and the skins. Boom. You're left with about like that. It's perfect. You are only going to need one or two for this meal. I know I have a handful. I wanted to make the, the counter look good. Um, even when you're cutting all the seeds and stuff out of this, it's going to get a little spicy a little quick. So, you know, depending on who you're serving it for, you know, if you already love spicy food, you're going to know how much you can handle, and that's fine. If this is the first time you're cooking it, uh, if this is the first time you're cooking it, I'd start with one, taste it, go from there. There's nothing wrong with tasting the food as you cook. So with these, I do suggest you try to get as fine of a dice as you can. Again, it's going to help mitigate the heat as well. If somebody takes what you don't want, if somebody take a big old bite, a big chunk of this thing, all of a sudden it ruined their night. Worst case, if they get into it and you have little itty bitty bites in there, little itty bitty chunks, um, a small dice, if you will, the worst case, what's going to happen is that... Um, they just may not be able to eat any more of it. But again, I don't think one, I don't think one habanero is too hot. Just me. All right, so I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit more. I'm gonna pop that habanero in there. Let that simmer for the next two or three minutes. I definitely need a touch more water. Um, can you grab me a touch more water? Oh, butter. You're going to want butter. Uh, put a tablespoon of butter in it. Put it in about now, right at the end. Um, you got about two, three minutes left. Let that butter get in there. Soak in. That's going to make that sauce just rich. Uh, this one's not going to add a ton of flavor in this one. There's already a ton of flavor in this sauce. It's just going to thicken up that sauce. It's going to make it really rich. Um, you know, a good um, a good sloppy joe is thick. Here, hold on, guys. I may have to get out of the camera. I'm back. Thank you so much. Um, so good sloppy joe. Again, I know I said I like it wet, and I do. Really thick and wet, right? So you can always thicken it up with cornstarch if you need to. Um, this chili sauce probably has some cornstarch in it. This particular kind does. Um, you can thicken it up. You just want it. So when I say I like it wet, I like it to have a lot of sauce. Um, I don't really like it runny for this. Because, again, you're putting it on bread, right? Um, and you want to be able to hold the bread. Two tablespoons of butter. Butter's great. Put more in. Okay. So that's it on this one. We're just going to let it simmer. Again, a few more minutes. That butter's going to melt. Everything's going to kind of get together. This is... Yeah, these are done. So we're just letting that sit. You guys, what did I not talk about today? Huh? This is for plating. We're not there yet. Um,
to get rid of that butter already. Welcome back. All right, so hope you guys got to look at that recipe. If not, it's going to be up on our video page uh, when we get done with this. I don't think Amazon takes any time um, putting it up there. It'll probably be live once it, yes, I'm right, or yes, it takes time. Yes, I'm right. Okay, so I will be back up, in, or it'll be up there in just a minute or two when we get out of here. So if you want to go back and look at the recipe, by all means, uh, please do so. I'm about to plate these for you. So guys, um, I have a little bit of butter. You'll see why in just a second. I'm heating up what well, I was trying to. Yeah. I'm heating up the DLX 11 inch fry pan. This uh, stainless steel fry pan is my favorite. So, uh, try that again. All right. So, this DLX, uh, this stainless steel is my favorite fry pan of all the fry pans I've ever used. Um, I worked in a kitchen for a long time. I love stainless steel. I know some people think it's hard to deal with. It's not nonstick. Um, you know, it's it's pretty hard to make things not stick in in stainless. So I get that you want to have a nonstick pan, which is why I love these pans. But this pan is a do it all. Uh, it's going to brown up on you. You're, you know, in three weeks, it's not going to be as pretty as it was when you bought it. It's never going to be shiny like this uh, again, unless you wash it every day with vinegar. Uh, you know, when it's hot, put vinegar on it, wipe it down, then it will stay. But otherwise, not. But it's a huge Ah, it's a great utility pan. I don't know where I was going with huge. Uh, it's a great utility pan. It can do it all. So what I'm going to do here is I really like to use stainless to kind of grill my buns. Yeah. So we're just going to heat up some butter just to where it starts to bubble. You don't want it turning brown. Um, brown butter is burnt butter unless you're using it for something. Um, now there are recipes where you want brown butter. Brown butter pasta is fantastic. Um, but brown butter is burnt butter unless that's what you want it it's going to give off a really smoky flavor it's going to give off it's just it'll take over the meal <clears throat> excuse me which is probably not where you were going we're going to take two of these we got those buns cooking um so i'm just going to plate this up for you guys so you can see kind of what it looks like people come over are you serving it for your family eh, off yeah no that's all right. i'm gonna figure these out a couple of jalapenos So, careful these are hot. Not yet, they're not, but they will be. So at Sloppy Joe's, I like pickles. Just a few pickle slices on the top. The acid in it really cuts, especially when you're using the pepper. Uh, you got sweet, you got fat in here, right? You got the fat from the meat. You got sweet from the peppers. You got sweet from the onion. Um, I put brown sugar in it. You got sweet from that. It's a relatively sweet meat dish. Uh, you need acid. So. You can put vinegar. You can just do, some people do, uh, what's that, malted vinegar? Sprinkle malted vinegar over the top. I like the crunch of a pickle. Um, if I didn't have the, if I didn't have all the chilies in here, I would use possibly pickled uh, jalapenos. Those are really good too. This isn't going to need any more heat. Um, I assume a lot of people are going to be afraid of it to begin with until they taste it anyway. So don't put any more heat on it until you know. So just get a good pickle. A dill pickle is perfect. Um, it's, you know, got a ton of, boom. It's got a ton of um, vinegar in it. It's going to really cut that with the acidity. There's enough sweet in it that it's not going to, you know, there's enough sweet in it that it's not going to shock the dish. Um, and dill pickles are relatively mild, especially store-bought ones that you get in a jar, um, which is what these are. If you make your own, then obviously they may not be the same. So you're just going to, eh, you know what, let's do it on the plate. I was going to make it clean, but let's make it dirty. Put it on the plate like so. Make sure you get some of that bacon in there on the plate. Thank you. This particular spoon may not have been the best one to use for this, but hey. But look, it still doesn't touch the cutting board. A couple pickles. Eh, excuse my hands. Um, just three or four pickles is really all you need here. Again, you're not trying to overpower it with the pickles. Boom. Boom. Don't let that catch on fire. You're supposed to yell at me when you see things smoking. We had that deal two weeks ago, and then nobody yelled at me this time. Now I can't put it anywhere because I'm going to melt the table. I got it. I got it. I got it. Boom. Okay. Off, off. Everything's off. There we have uh, Chipotle. What did I make? 
Chipotle Sloppy Joes. Um, we use chili peppers for a bunch of stuff, guys. Uh, none of this is going to be too spicy. You can't eat it. I'm going to serve this to this crew. I'll report back later if I messed up and it is too hot. But these should not be too hot at all. Uh, if you like, if you like spice, if you like a little adventure, take it out of the can. Don't just get that man which can. Make your own. You saw it took me 15 minutes. Uh, it's going to take you about the same amount of time to do it out of the can. You know, you got to open the can, simmer it up. Maybe that takes 10. You save mine five minutes. Do it this way. You get to make it how you want it. Um, you know, take pride in what you do. Love cooking. Cooking's fantastic. Um, follow down below. That's step number one. Every Tuesday we're here at 2 o'clock. Uh, I cook something for you. The crew's about to give me a bowl to pick out of. I pick an ingredient and make something with it. Stressed, but uh, everything here you can find at your local grocery store. It's relatively cheap. Um, I am not going to use any ingredients that you can't find locally or at least most of the local places at your local grocery store. Um, we love that you guys are here. Again, comment down below with anything you want to see me cook, anything I did wrong today, anything I mentioned wrong today. I'm sure there's a bunch of that. Um, yeah, if there's a pan you guys want to see me cook with or, you know, some kind of something in the kitchen, whether it's knife skills or anything, comment down below. I'm here for you. We're looking for content to do. You guys can help us with that. If we pick your, I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to do it anyway. If we pick your content idea, we're going to figure out a way to get you something fun. Um, I will have to figure out a way to message you. I don't know exactly how that works. The Amazon team's probably screaming at me right now because I don't know if it can happen. Um, but comment down below if we pick your recipe suggestion or if we pick your video selection, uh, we will get you guys a prize. So without further ado, I need to pick out of this bowl here to see what next week is. It is probably some other summertime Caribbean fruit, but let's see what we got. Polenta. Yes. All right. We're starting to get into fall time. Guys, polenta is going to be fantastic. Um, Comment down below if I should go Latin or if I should go Western European. Uh, or if you want me to just come up with something totally different. I could surprise you and go Korean. But I think we'd be in here for a while. Korean meals take forever when they use corn for some reason. Um, love you guys. Come back next week. We'll see you Tuesday at 2. Again, thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Do me a favor. Click that like button. Click the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell, make sure you hit that. Comment down below. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to bring you another great recipe.